school seniors are right around 18 years old. They can be drafted into the military. They can buy firearms to their heart's content. They're old enough to vote, for goodness sake. But in Florida, evidently the age of 18 is not old enough to think about things that may matter most to them. The latest victim of Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, AP Psychology. The Washington Post reports larger school districts in the state are dropping plans to offer the course as discussions about sexual orientation could violate the law. Because nothing says advanced psychology quite like limiting free expression and avoiding complicated questions. Joining our conversation, Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, and Brandon Wolf, press secretary at Equality Florida, an advocacy group for Florida's LGBTQ community. <laughs> Randy, the, the Post reports eight of the 11 districts with the largest enrollments in AP Psych are switching to alternate courses. Two are still deciding. Just one said it was sticking with the course. What is the actual harm done here? So what this is doing is just eroding opportunity for Florida's um, students, and that's what uh, that's what the governor is doing, and that's what the Department of Education is doing. AP Psych. Look, I'm an AP Gov teacher. AP Psych is one of the most popular AP courses. Um, there's about 1,800 people or 1,400 uh, kids in Palm Beach who were going to take it. There's 27,000 kids in Florida that were going to take it. And in the last few days, basically, College Board did the right thing. They said, you can't just take a chapter out of human development and identity and say it's AP Psych. And frankly, I think those other alternative courses that are doing it, they're going to be told that there's not going to be, it's not college ready and it's not appropriate. So the good news is today, Palm Beach stepped up and said, we're giving it to our kids. And the teachers have said, we're doing this. Um, and that's the pushback that we've been doing, that Brandon has been doing, that we've been doing, to basically say, you have a right, parents, to make this decision. You have a right that your kids can go to this class. You can opt out of it. You can go to it. Give that class to kids in Florida. Brandon, you have been clear with us since the beginning. This Don't Say Gay Bill it wasn't just about what was on paper, the consequences, the tentacles of it are ever expanding, right? And, and these kids, they're not elementary children, they're, they're young adults. They are living this in their life, even if they are not allowed to talk about it in the classroom. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and keep in mind, some of these students are 18, by the way. Uh, I appreciate that we're getting to a solution. I'm, I'm so grateful for Palm Beach and the other counties that have made the decision to go ahead and teach the course. But I think we need to be clear on two very specific things. Number one is that this is putting school districts once again in an impossible situation that's being driven by the policy you just talked about. They get one set of guidance, the no AP psych allowed from the Department of Education. And then moments later, they get different guidance from the commissioner of education. Meanwhile, they have the careers of thousands of educators and the class schedules of tens of thousands of students that are hanging in the balance. And they have a responsibility to do right by all of those people. And so they get stuck wondering if offering the course might cost teachers their job and also understanding that pulling the course out from under people is going to cost students their opportunity for college credit. So it's no wonder that these districts are again paralyzed by this bigoted law and moving very cautiously. And the second thing to get very clear on is that this is the intended outcome. Yep. This has been the DeSantis regime's MO for four and a half years. They use vague language and ominous threats to get communities to self-censor so that they can feign ignorance when the very most extreme interpretations of the law come to fruition. But they don't get to wash their hands of this crisis. I think school districts uh, should call the commissioner's bluff. I think they should teach the course in its entirety, make him do the triangulating on the policy. But we should make no mistake that we did not have to be here we are here because of this governor's breathless obsession with queer people, a state government that has been completely bent to his appetite for power, and this war on freedom that has put families in Florida squarely in its crosshairs. All right, put a pin in that thought about your governor, because I want to come back and talk about him as a presidential contender, mm -hmm. because, Randy, I got to get to this, which is that apparently William Shakespeare, who died more than 400 years ago, is woke now. So you have students in Florida only going to be reading excerpts from the Bard's plays from the Associated Press. Quote, several Shakespeare plays use suggestive puns and innuendo, and it is implied that the protagonists have had premarital sex in Romeo and Juliet. I mean, we are at a point where this is, it's, it's just parody, right, Randy? I mean, if there, if there weren't it's, such extreme... It is just... Go ahead. It's just, it's just ridiculous. 
The AP Psych course has been around for 20 to 30 years. Shakespeare, 400 years ago. 400 years ago, it was amazing. Or 200 years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. This is exactly what Brandon just said. The confusion, the chaos, the taking things away, the keeping people on eggshells, that is the point. And it is harming students. It is frightening teachers. And I'm glad that Palm Beach has stood up. I'm, I will defend every teacher who teaches this course because they are doing it for students. Friends, and as, as a former Floridian myself, someone who cares about Florida, someone who has <laughs> family in Florida, I, I, I care about all of this for the sake of Florida, but I also think we have to look at what Ron DeSantis has done in Florida as a prelude to what it is he would intend to do were he to be elected president. He, he's showing us what this vision looks like. And I think it's interesting that when you look at the newest polling, the so-called war on woke, it isn't appealing to a national audience. I mean, people are just that that is not what they are sitting around and thinking about as they go through their day to day lives. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, listen, <laughs> just listen to the conversation we're having. It's not out of the onion. It's a real conversation that we're having, and it's totally absurd especially when you consider that the things that keep people up at night are whether they can put food on the table or whether they're going to be able to fill their car with gas. Listen, Equality Florida put out last year ads warning that this very thing was going to happen. And proponents of this governor's extreme agenda said we were being hyperbolic. They said, oh, the law doesn't say gay at all. No books will be banned. No one's going to be censored. Well, we weren't being hyperbolic. We were foreshadowing what was to come. And here we are. These are the real consequences of Ron DeSantis's war on freedom. The freedom to read is under siege in the state of Florida. The freedom to learn is under siege in the state of Florida. And we should take Ron DeSantis at his word when he says his plan is to make America Florida. He's already not just shown us what the roadmap is. He's told us it is his blueprint for the country. So, America, know that Florida is your canary in the coal mine. It breaks my heart to say that because, as you noted, I moved here to, to Florida 15 years ago. And I chose Florida as my home. But I moved to Barack Obama's Florida, not Ron DeSantis's Florida. <laughs> and it is really heartbreaking to watch the damage that he has done to the state and its reputation.